something. Welcome back to Intersect Town Hall. Now we are in the after Town Hall stage. Uh, we had a bit of uh, feedback from the Zoom polls and most selected topic between, uh, I think we had, I don't know, it took it from the analytics, I just took it from the numbers there. I think we had 12 uh, people who participated in the Zoom polling and eight of them chose what strategies are needed to build and sustain a skilled blockchain workforce. And yeah, let's have a bit of discussion on that uh, question. Uh, Eduardo already, uh, before we started, we had this networking call and Eduardo already started that this is definitely needed area to, to create like connections between companies, jobs and uh, people. And what would be other angles or perspectives um, and strategies, especially specifically, you would introduce in order to to build a sustained skilled blockchain force? And I know we have Luca series who is building educational and onboarding material. Vanessa is doing quality assurance information to get like good information about any blockchain. I mean, not any blockchain, but uh, like communities who are working on blockchains. Dex is working on open source there. Daniel is coming from Single Internet. Yeah, Lucas, you have a round up. Uh, yeah, just something that comes to mind on the onboarding, uh, on the workforce part. I think these kinds of calls could be very instrumental for teams to come over and share a bit. We've had this kind of reporting of, okay, we've been doing this, we've been doing that. But in terms of uh, inter team, um, experience or practices exchange. I think these calls could be very open to, because we've been doing that or maybe not even doing it on Discord, but human communication in a live call could probably be a good way to, let's say, scrum the teams. Usually, you know, as you know, teams do scrums internally, but here we could have teams sharing a bit how they've been um, addressing and organizing. Yeah, so that could contribute to the same way we were talking about onboarding someone on a almost personal level uh, that teams could onboard each other uh, in terms of uh, sharing what practices they have been using. And yeah, for me, like the biggest part here is uh, in, in, even in Swarm, we started like doing this uh, Swarm Treasury Guild and recognizing participation and contribution. And one part is like that overhead of recognizing work done is, um, I think I, I, I kind of love it, but it does take time and it is sometimes a costly endeavor. Um, but I feel like this is kind of needed in a sense in order, to, because if you want to sustain entire auction ecosystem, you, you would better want to have some kind of uh, history of who are building that kind of uh, blockchain and what they are doing, where they are coming from, and having them this kind of um, recognition that is shareable, it's transparent, and, and it's addressing and like, connecting what needs to be contributed in order to keep the governance alive, to keep the activities collaboration alive. And from that side, and yeah, it, it is related to strategy on like building on a long term but it does also keep in mind that you will need to then have some kind of funding or some kind of source that keeps maintaining that documentation. Because you know, even if you are setting up practices and okay, we're gonna do wow. documentation here and this way, it, you will start to kind of realize that you need to start training other people to keep it up because else it's not scalable. It's just one person doing it and then it's, so yeah. Uh, I think that, and then what it comes back down to is again, education. It, there is no way around to just kind of have good onboarding ways to get snippets of information they need at their time. Uh, and I think curating that has been the highest challenge right now that's ongoing. And I think this is going to be ongoing problem for futures too. Every five years, something dramatically shifts and it just it never seems to have the right tools at the right time. Always one step ahead. But Vanessa, you have a hand up. 
Yeah, I mean, I think one, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, particularly about documentation. I'm always in favour of doing that and capturing and recognising what people do. But I think one of the other things that I always think in these um, environments is we want to do a bit of thinking about what actually is work and what counts as work. Um, we often work in new ways in these Web3 um, places. And say, for example, some of the work that we all do on an ongoing basis often goes unrewarded and unrecognised. Things like community building. I think an awful lot of people here are involved in that kind of work and it doesn't always get recognised. It doesn't always get rewarded. And that can mean that people end up very disheartened when they're doing it. But I also think that, yeah, the kind of documentation stuff that you're talking about, Teva, sometimes in these um, online communities that we work in, we sometimes feel isolated from each other. We sometimes wonder if what we're doing is even real. And documenting what we do can kind of give it that reality. And yeah, that actually did happen. We actually did do that. It did make these changes. And I think... Tied in with that, not only documenting, but change management. If we do something that produces a change, it's good to have quite an empirical approach to it, to kind of say, well, what were we aiming to achieve by doing this work? And then looking at whether we did achieve it and not having it in terms of success and failure. Oh, did you succeed in what you... It's more just about learning from what you did or didn't do and if it didn't work that can be just as valuable as if it did but these kinds of attitudes i think are not things that you find in the old web 2 working world and i think if if we have these attitudes of you can fail and it it can be valuable and we need to record not only what we did but what effect it had these things can help keep us all engaged otherwise we end up feeling like our work is almost imaginary i think yeah i like the point of what effects like what effect our collaborations and decisions have is this what comes up with documentation but then it's also now i guess it gets a bit of a rabbit hole because uh, there are all kinds of documentation and some of them don't really print that up uh, and so that's why we, I guess, like the best thing is to have is a retrospective, so the go over of history. Um, and this is interesting because it brings back again to this intersect town hall and to see, like, hey, if we would just go through the updates we share, because what intersect is, we are, all the updates are generally very kind of light in a sense that they're not meant to go into deep. It's like, hey, what happened? What is going to happen? What we work on right now, and and if I basically go down the rabbit hole every now and then to just to kind of go. Just recently, I did this uh, Twitter analysis. Okay, when did we share survey and when did we share the uh, town halls and which messages we had like more, more impressions, which didn't. But even then, I kind of checked on what was the topics uh, at that time. Um, I'm not sure if like kind of I like, didn't do like deep analysis if there is any insights to learn from there, but um, yeah, it, it, it like that kind of thing going into past. It's always, I mean, like uh, refreshing because it shows you how fast we are building, how fast the agendas are changing, and um, yeah, and it and it somewhat kind of helps you like okay, it's not about keeping up with what Intersect is doing and what Cardano is doing, but understanding where you get your source information and when you need it. Because in the end, it's about using your presence at that moment to kind of steer and, and, and help, help people to find answers that they need. And like this comes back to the strategy. It's like, yeah. Okay, this have a strategy. We have intersect the uh, Gnome space is a pretty good like documentation trail in, in some sense, and every work is updating it. And the more we use, the more we kind of feel like, okay, yeah, if you have any questions, go to this knowledge space. And the more we kind of work on 
categorizing and organizing it, the faster we can also give them the like the higher level link hierarchy instead of a there is a committee link, but instead here is the link for intersect. If you are interested in committees, you will quickly find it. Just pay five minutes attention, read how is <laughs> knowledge base organized, and you will find your information. Right now, uh, yeah, to me, I haven't had any barriers of finding information in the intersect town hall, but I wonder uh, like what in situations when there isn't like like the, I don't know, like if, if there should be any information, but it isn't, for example, intersect town halls, you don't know anything about that because they are not in knowledge base. We do have a kit book, but it's not connected. And through maybe a snake trail of uh, finding in grants and then milestones, that way you might start finding it. But uh, yeah, like how do we showcase people who are not in knowledge base? Because it's very centralized right now. Like, well, maybe not. I don't know, maybe if every committee has an access to edit it. So any, any thoughts on like having that kind of overarching of access to information or wiki or knowledge base and how that works with the strategy and uh, yeah, on the chat, maybe AI would help a lot with documentation, it's just a matter of giving all the data and ideas. Right now, I'm a bit skeptical, but I do believe in the future of like having AI to provide meeting summaries and, and context and help you find. But it does help you find stuff. So it is even when, uh, for example, this right now we're working on constitutional uh, that uh, the document. The, um, <clears throat> I don't know what's the name was slipping on my mind. But you could just drop that into GPT, any of these LLMs kind of work, and then ask questions. What is it about? How does it affect? And then you add your placeholder. And But for meeting summaries, I don't know. It, it feels to not kind of get it what is important from meetings. It kind of maybe adds these keywords into a meeting summary, but you still need like a human to to clean the data and right now the AI doesn't seem to be there unless it's very like systematic. If it's an open conversation, it doesn't look like it can do the work. At best it can just one to one transcribe it and but then not really give the details, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how, how your experiences are with the AI summaries and uh, because today uh, or summaries were added here into this call. Didn't let anybody in <laughs> because of that, like, I don't know. I actually don't read them that much, but uh, they, with the bits I read, are not that accurate. And like mm -hmm. you said, it, it lacks the um, the right prioritization of, of even to what was explicitly discussed in the in the in the meeting. So, I still believe that. You know, swarm, right? It, it talks about working as a, a swarm, uh, collaborating, and, and getting something built. Is that not the concept? So I think the human support in in a in, in a chained way could could go a long way. Looking on the stuff, so okay, we do have now. <clears throat> let, let's say that we have established a good pattern to document, and which we. I would say we have a good pattern. We're using uh, open source tools. They are transparency available. And probably there are ways to change information, even if it may look like a bit of uh, hard to find, how to change like knowledge base. We have established a lot of different ways to create groups, to create these interactions, to, to talk about anything. Although our incentivizing part uh, is purely knowledge and the strive and the intention of like helping. And there is like that hard part that it's perhaps not, um, it cannot be addressing all those who are like day to day work. And um, how would, how could we build in a connection with those who, let's say, have a work and family and only have a weekend? to catch up uh, with the uh, community. What could, well, we know that 
there is an opportunity to quit their own job or not, and maybe they don't even have to do that but like have a, a way to live using these connections but it's very hard to kind of because you still need to know people i guess or, or know where to try for example maybe if somebody finds out about project capitalist and then makes a proposal then he doesn't get funded but some people are finding that oh that's a great idea and uh, let's let's flesh it out and then comes it back again in the next fund and then it gets funded and then like okay now i need to juggle with my actual life and actually building the product um and then he quits job and then realize the next funding doesn't come like they, they do it but now they, they need to get it to market and now he's like in the seat and if the funding doesn't come it's very hard position and that happened quite a lot like the basically fund four or three or let's say have three or four where the first of these patterns started showing up the catalyst is not meant to be a continuous funding it's to provide and it's a bit of a luck too who is getting uh, funded so how, how do we integrate these kinds of um, people safely so that we we can benefit, they can benefit from what we build and the networks we build, but we also don't uh, take away that risk from them, um, other than just having like education in place. Is there any thoughts about that, or some solutions or something that you have noticed or patterns or trends that can be leveraged? In certain way, when we we talking about the the, the component of the education, it's uh, includes uh, the way to, to 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 put the the product or the solution in, in the marketing. Usually, many people know in this area know to, to create the code and write the code and these kind of things but uh, usually don't have the management skills and uh, maybe in catalyst uh, the solution it's good but to jump to the to the market it's uh, it's uh, another story you know Because for for example, yes, the, in Lisbon we we have the the Cardano summit, and uh, we're talking uh, about the exponential uh, organization. I'm part of the exponential organization, and the way they they manage or try to manage a company that. Uh, want to to grow they have some uh, features or attributes it's very I, I saw a bridge with the the blockchain the idea of the community the idea of the social um, i see some bridge and uh, why not to 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 take uh, one uh, management philosophy, if I can uh, call it this way, and also to to spread or to, to teach the way that the these companies uh, looking for uh, the business, and uh, the examples are the the examples that. They show it, for example, Airbnb, uh, Google, uh, um, Ubers, and uh, these kind of companies. Of course, these companies, it's very centralized. And the idea is to bring like this, uh, this approach, but for this decentralized uh, world. If I can say in this way, yeah, this is goes very closely what uh, last um, yesterday in Summit, uh, the last panel was about um, uh, 
Okay, the last panel wasn't real, but, but the, the last, I don't know, it wasn't really panel, it was t talking about decentralization and effect and, and as of, of course, like the swarm movement uh, and, and in general about it. And I think overall, the summit was more like everything is in new in a sense that, yes, we have all of these practices and, and, and philosophies, but now what we try to do is decentralize all of them. And even the ones that maybe not make sense, just to kind of have the practice, at least I am trying to decentralize project management and sometimes it doesn't really make sense, but it's really fun practice to how do you, because the first you need to understand what goes into project management, how, how modular can you make it and what parts you can like give it the way um, and reason, like, like, yeah, right now as a, I don't know, for the years, trying to push that project management like a way to each individual. So every member is self-managing themselves and self-organizing. I think this is one also key part of uh, like, like good strategies that make yourself sustainable is learning that what you kind of said, like business thinking, but also another side is and like management thinking and self-organizing, planning yourself. So you don't wait for somebody else to plan a meeting for you, but you take up that courage to talk to person you need to talk and set up a time. And once you get that, you, you already have a building block and already trust in yourself that, yeah, coordinating isn't that hard. Yes, there maybe are, could be a better tools to help and they're not much of the tools are interoperable. So you use uh, Google or Notion or special things to kind of do this. And that's, that's just one part of it. It's just connecting, but then getting to a project, like, especially now what I like about, like when I entered in Catalyst was this idea of proposal first. And then uh, we have, it's been introduced in MCC also like this kind of sociocracy 3.0, where you, you write your stuff down, you plan and, and you do it together. But once this kind of, proposal gets accepted, you start to need to implement it. And you will need a project manager, somebody who is going to kind of keep track of, okay, where are the tasks are, what are, because you don't, there are so many things you don't know. So you don't even have the plan, but somebody has to kind of keep in mind, okay. And, and like, okay, these are things that are new. These are things that are going to be changed. We may no longer actually need these parts. So yeah. Anyway, I went into a lot of, but Lucas, you have a up. Uh, guys, uh, I need to hop because I'm running a battery, um, but uh, it was a great discussion and look forward to the future town halls. And uh, I didn't really understand what's happening with uh, re-establishing your proposal to run things uh, next year, but uh, I'll try to catch up on that. Okay. Thanks for everything. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye Lucas. Take care. Bye. See you. Uh, see ya. wonder what uh, what he meant by question of re-establishing proposals. Oh, we were just talking in the breakout room that we were in about um, that that is what the um, planning sessions are going to be working on. So oh. I think it's just the first time he was hearing about it. So we'll have to connect and catch him up a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, on on that question, what strategies are needed? Um, any other thoughts somebody wants to add here? Uh, yeah, for me, uh, it could be interesting to use some technologies, as I told uh, before in the, in the chat, like AI, for example, but there are other ways to communicate a decentralized way like I don't know if you have heard about a, a project I think it's closed now but it, it was a great project uh, it was upgrade I think it's written like I, I, I can write it in the chat upgrade uh, it was very useful for talking with a lot of people at the same time you can set a question and uh, <clears throat> 
just voting, you you have a round, a first round uh, about answering. You can answer or just waiting, and the next round was for voting all the other responses. Then at the end of the of all, all the rounds, you have the more more voted answer between all the community. And for example, I think it could be a great uh, application or platform or something similar for, for a huge communication with a very huge group of people. Speaking of voting, what uh, in some places what we do is like, for example, Mara Bojo can also do voting and we could put like everybody join here and select what is everybody gets like five votes and select what is most important part of it. So wait, but I wonder like, do we want to really pull, I, I guess it's up, up to what you actually need to get done in, in that specific circumstance. Like voting, I, I feel like it's always a bit um, dangerous because it's already starts to, yeah, I, I guess if you, when you call it voting, it, it, you will have a loser there as, as, uh, automatically. But if, yeah, but it still can be considered different. So it's not just about voting, it's just having a sentiment, having a priority. And that's already that gives a bit different yeah. notion to that. Yeah, that, that's uh, different. I think uh, that kind of uh, platforms could be useful for because you, you are not voting about a K constant to be increased or not. If in that case, we have Cardano and all the all the technologies working on that are great, are very useful for that kind of decisions. But about feeling decisions or philosophical decisions, uh, that that kind of platform could be great. I, I will look for for them more more deeper. For the next time. Comida. Well, uh, uh, about the AI tools, I saw the one. It's uh, STS. It's strategic uh, thinking uh, system. It's like uh, imagine it's a team making questions to a high and based with the 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 answers the the team discuss the the answers you know and the, each person in the team is uh, put this question put that question and the the it's like analyzing the the the, the answer in the in the team and it's something that it's a, a team of the this community exponential organization that are right now building and refine. Let me see if I can share the the site. I'm gonna try something random here and ask Chip GPT. Our topic is what strategies we are using, and uh, these are uh, our meeting notes. What are the main takeaways? And let's see what GPT comes up with. Yeah, okay, one thing I asked, like, uh, uh, maybe a question was wrong. I asked, what was the takeaways of current discussion? And it brought things up, like encouraging interoperable discussion, facilitating dialogue between different groups. It's crucial to ensure onboarding, engaging, creating learning opportunities. So it kind of gives this framework, but perhaps we should ask uh, uh, itself directly, uh, just. Uh, what are blockchain industry uh, thoughts on? On that question. Oh, well, it's going to the 
sites blockchain industry strategy build system bing rather labs how to attract and retain blockchain talent cs iro achieving blockchain adoption so it's okay gpd is going through different uh, articles which you block european union's response to blockchain skills and the result let me go ahead, drop another picture here There is a strong focus on combining both and hard technical and soft technical blockchain professionals need to build versus programming, cryptography and user experience design, um, leveraging community engagement. This is something I, I think what makes maybe interesting to look at this information would be if we are comparing it to something, for example, Intersect, because we are in Intersect Town Hall and code row like do we have comprehensive skill development and do we, like, I'm not sure, like, I wouldn't say that we have any educational programs in place in Intersect per se, but we do definitely have it in like Cardano in general. Um, but yeah, should Intersect be a place where you come and learn how to establish some kind of skill and take like position of co-chairing or facilitating or, or running for a committee member. Would you, any thoughts on here? Should it keep come from, should this material be supported and come from Intersect or this is because they are not kind of chosen to do that, then it doesn't really matter. And one other thing, leveraging community engagement. Here I would say that there is a lot of leveraging that is happening and on like, we are constantly different, like especially the grant funds, I think they are helping a lot with uh, engaging with different skill sets of people. But that already assumes that the members and community members have the skills in place. Innovate compensation models. Um, I wouldn't say that there is much of innovation in the compensation models per se, unless we look at the like on-chain uh, stuff, uh, like uh, uh, like the way the SPOs get rewarded, mm. but not like in governance. Like right now, DREPs don't get any rewards, but there is a lot of discussion about how should DREPs get rewarded. So maybe then something will pop up regardless if some people want it or not. And Vanessa, do you have a up? Yeah, just on that leveraging community engagement thing, obviously it's interesting, but I think many blockchain communities do quite well on that, but they don't spend enough time thinking about what they're onboarding or engaging people with. And then, you know, you you do so, you do an event, you get loads of people in, and then it's like, right, what now? So you can't you can't just do it in isolation. It's got to be connected to what you're going to do next. I think, and I think that's where we're more likely to fall down. Because I'm not saying that having an event is easy, but it's comparatively easier, and getting people all fired up and all excited about the possibilities is comparatively easier than the sustained work of keeping them involved and engaged. And looking at what rewards you're going to offer and what incentives you're going to offer, you know, so people come in and then get disappointed and bugger off again with a negative experience that they then pass on to others. And this is definitely something that's happening um, quite often in, 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 I would say, in this Cardano ecosystem. But I, I don't think it's intentional. It, I think the, the, the biggest crux here is um, I, I think the tension comes from the place where there is, well, we have this set of uh, companies and enterprises that have somewhat kind of felt like, oh, okay, we need community input here. And then they are, they are the reason why we exist. Let's, let's incorporate them into our like plans. But the problem is they, they kind of show us the plans, but we cannot co-create the with them. And that's like the one part of it. Um, and the second part is like, 
yeah, like the maintenance. So, so even if you get somebody aligned, okay, you have a great idea. Let's 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 do what you're working on. It's unclear how can you contribute. It's like, okay, cool. You made an event to notify me that this is going to happen. You're looking for feedback. I filled the feedback form. Next event is two months, three months, where I get the results of what happened through the survey. But there was no way for me to address any of the concerns that appeared in the survey. And, and you don't even know what edge cases were there because the survey's data isn't public. <laughs> like, uh, the, the, only the insights created by these selected individuals that are put in place to help steer the community. In fact, uh, I, I like what uh, Vanny talk about. In fact, engagement, it's like uh, it's like a free choice. Each person decides if I want to be engagement or, or no. And uh, today it's very difficult because of the time and this kind of things. And maybe the, 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 the best way it's to, to put a, a clear purpose we can uh, we can talk like a massive transformative purpose uh, a -A -M -T -P. because when the people see the the, the purpose and even feel that uh, i'm a part uh, even at my personal purpose uh, it's connect with this general purpose or this or the community purpose uh and make sense maybe the the the, the engagement will grow you know and uh, in certain times you, you you don't need to to have like a, a direct uh, benefits but maybe an indirect uh, benefits for example, if you saw right now what uh, happens in the Argentina, it's like the, the purpose, it's the freedom. And the people feel that uh, they want also the freedom for uh, themselves. And, uh, okay, I go by this... Um, this... Uh, uh, road because I want the, the freedom. And maybe the, the, the big proposal of the, 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 the Cardan or uh, this community, I want to be a part of this big proposal that we connect directly. I don't want uh, third parts, uh, intermediaries. Maybe I can build the tool for that and uh, uh it, it, it's like most of the people work in the company and wake up and the people don't know why why the purpose why i wake up each monday i go there but uh, you know and maybe to, to create uh, uh, this mtp the massive uh, transformative purpose very clear the people go to and uh, engagements you 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 know of course it, it's not to say ah oh, we go to save the world okay uh, i listen so many times but it, 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 it's like to to, to the world the, maybe not decentralization to use the word decentralization but uh, maybe it makes sense peer to peer, you know. I want to talk with you. I want to send you directly to you the this message. I want to to know that uh, your CV it's right, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you work in that company. If you saw the the the. the this week I saw uh, two times the the the, the video from uh, Charles Oskisons uh, after the Voltaire, 
and uh, in certain part he talking about the in five years the dominance of AI it will be incredible and in the end the people don't trust uh, in the right now institutions you know and uh, because uh, we don't know if the the people uh, want to to lead with the reality or the fantasy and uh, something that uh, bring or can rebuild the trust it's uh, the blockchain you know because uh, with AI, I can uh, make uh, make theater that I'm a doctor, you know, and I'm I don't understand anything about medicine, but you know, and uh, it, 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 it create create the, the the tools for rebuild the trust, you know. And uh, and after, I hope that the engagement uh, uh, will grow. Usually, you saw that uh, in the history, the 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 population can ha have uh, a great engagement when the purpose is very clear. Yeah, you added a lot of insights into this one. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I think the meeting somewhere is going to be much more challenging because, uh, because a lo lot of this is related to building a sustainable workforce. And but how do we wrap it up into clear strategies might be uh, challenging unless these AI results are kind of giving us a starting point. Um, I wonder, we do have another two questions which were quite uh, highly like rated. How can we ensure inclusivity and representation in decision-making process? I feel like that we did slightly discuss, uh, discuss around like uh, documenting, um, but would there be something addition we would want to say about that? You know the the the, the I, you know my my sometimes the process of the decision making it's it, it, sometimes it's the the options or uh, yeah the options you can uh, you have in front. Usually, I said. Usually, when uh, a person discussed and I uh, have uh, a hot uh, brain, usually don't can't don't see all the the, the options. And uh, one of the things that I like in these uh, meetings it's to open the the options, and. Uh, uh, and after. After uh, make a, a, a decisions, you know. Sometimes I, I joke. Uh, usually, when we we make a question, we we like to 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 hear yes or no. The problem is when the the, the people tell maybe, but maybe why. Maybe because I don't have all the information. Maybe because uh, uh, it's not the, the right uh, context. Maybe next week, but this week it's impossible. Maybe, you know, usually when we begin to say maybe, in the end it's a no. <laughs> you know, the answer is no. <laughs> Why you don't answer before? Uh, no. Oh, because uh, maybe. 
but in the case that uh, maybe I need to learn, I need to 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 to, to get more information. Usually, in the important things, uh, it's uh, it's part of the decision making process. Oh, so was what I'm just wondering the takeaway. And uh, is is it saying that you need a rationale? So yes, we have this yes no options, but we do we do we always need a rationale behind our decisions, or is it not uh, really? No, it, 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 it's important, of course. It's important. Uh, of course, the, some decisions, it's uh, based in the emotional. But uh, but uh, maybe the best, it's the, the rational uh, decisions, you know. Yeah, but, but what... Effect does emotional rational have on or should have on the decisions, or like they are not because you can't really compare, I guess, um, rational or like what you say, how, how do we say, it? constructive uh, rational versus emotional rational. In certain way, the the depend. It, it... For example, if I want to to sell uh, something, maybe uh, depend of the, the things, but uh, maybe I I can sell to appeal for the emotional uh, part, and uh, for example, to buy a house can be uh, maybe it's better to, to make a, a rational uh, um, decisions but uh, if uh, it's to go to the beach maybe it can be the the, the, the most emotional uh, part to to make the decision you know Because uh, maybe the beach have uh, it's more danger and it's more adventure or something like that. It depends of the, the the context, you know. But, but I feel like they, the oh no, something happened. Uh, only two of us are in. Oh. Ah, okay, few people left. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering, is the emotional stuff, because you say it can be adventure, but also I feel like constructive rationale is a bit of an adventure, because if you're doing retrospective, for example, that is using historical information, which is already a bit of like constructive, because you're talking of things, what actually happened. And then the adventure there is, uh, yeah, like what happened? How uh, I think when you're saying it, do you mean the adventure that may happen, like in like the vision here we are or the journey we are embarking? And there it's yeah, so do I make sense? Can we kind of well, split the adventure into two? For example, uh, TikTok. TikTok, uh, it, it's like begins like it's uh, a dancing uh, application. The people go and dancing and the, these kind of things, and uh, the people who decide to to engage with this was emotional, you know. Mm. It's to laughing, it's to, to shout uh, to the friends, it's uh, happiness and these kind of things. And uh, for example, Airbnb, okay, we go to, 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 uh, to holidays, we go to this city and these kind of things. 
you 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 looking uh, half bus near it's far away from the center uh, have restaurants near you begin to put more uh, uh, rational uh, fixtures in your uh, process of to take a, a, de a decision and of course uh, how, how much it's by night and these kind of things That's an interesting word, rational fictions. But yeah, you're building yourself. And, uh, uh, but on, 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 on that note, because everything, okay, it's it's interesting to learn where are the decisions coming from, but that all of that is feels like a downside, actually. Like, should we sell our options? So, like, when we make governance actions in Cardano blockchain, so should these actions basically sell the 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 action it's meant to do or or it's, or we want to kind of filter that out because it may be noise it may be opinion and it may be irrational even and if we just keep it constructed we have a better like better data, I guess, to, to to make decisions on because they're either grounded on facts or uh, uh, some kind of uh, practice. You know, you, you in a certain way, it's like you you need the you 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 need to use like the 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 two components the the rational and the emotional because uh, you you all don't know in the beginning uh, what kind of person you have in front if it's a rational or a emotional of course with time we begin to see small details that can uh, transmit to to us what kind of person it is. For example, uh, I read this a uh, few months ago. Uh, in the in this part of the the world, in the west part. Um, the marketing usually like to to say like uh, this is the the best of the market and uh, it's enough. But uh, if you go to to Asia and you begin to see the the, the kind of the marketing the guys see, uh, take a a magazine and see the advertisement, you need to put like set uh, seven or six uh, arguments to buy a product to to engage the the person. You know, it's number one because it's uh, that and uh, the best quality and the the, the best uh, logistic, uh, the best. You know, <clears throat> even uh, the the. In the end, uh, all this, it's uh, invitations to the other person to make a decision, you know? The problem is uh, how to invite these persons to take a, a decision by the way it's uh, one argument and rational, or it's uh, one argument but emotional, or I need uh, five uh, arguments rational to convince, to invite the, the person to take a decision, or I need five uh, emotional arguments for the people to take a decision. It's like, uh, like a frame with this uh, kind of uh, four sides. In extreme, of course, because in the end, each person uh, take uh, a mix of the emotional and rational uh, components uh, in the end. Mm. Yeah, we went uh, pretty deep on decision making, but when I 
Okay, let's zoom out a little on like Cardano. Uh, zoom it related. Uh, the, the question in Zoomit was addressing more on um, uh, like the legal part and how how DAOs can represent their identities in their membership. Who will have, yeah, even how they, what can they sign, who they can make contract with, who can get even rewarded, how the taxes are moving, can they and like the interaction between different countries even. Um, but here, yeah, and representing these different like organizations. Right now we have the tools of multi-seek and we're putting stuff on chain where we are directing our like trust. Okay, <laughs> these are the keys, these are the hashes that can steer whatever communications and uh, like decisions in both in broad level like country regulations and also in like a lower level uh, where it's uh, more about in the individual teams interactions between their members well I, 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 even in, in this uh, video i invite you to to search it, it's uh, like less than one week, five days ago, or something like that, came out the the, the video. Even uh, Charles uh, talking about the automate uh, regulation, because uh, right now you you're talking about uh, counter regulation. We know that uh, many of the, the regulations or one part of the regulation it's completely crazy or. Uh, don't make sales, but uh, of course uh, between the, the the between the relations between the persons, we need uh, some uh, regulation. Usually, it's a good e education or a social uh, protocol. You, you know, in Portugal, it's typical when you go to somewhere the first thing you you say it's good morning and thank you and these kind of things you know but uh, in the certain way in this uh, decentralized uh, governance we try to in the end to create uh, like uh, uh, a good sense or uh, a common sense sometimes good sense and common sense it's a little different but the uh, to create a, a regulation that uh, bring uh, uh, whole parts of the, the view you know mm. whole part of the participants something it's when I'm a customer another thing it's when I'm a supplier another thing it's the environment okay I buy something but it's good for the planet or bad for the planet you know it's in certain way the the organizations like uh, intersect it's to help to, to these uh, uh, decentralized governments it's to to catch different views and uh, to create the the, the 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 regulations that make sense for uh, uh, each one and uh, the, 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 only the, 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 the chance to, to participate, to, to give a small idea and this small idea someone catch and put in, in the result in the end, uh, give me like uh, a better engagement that someone list hear me or listen me, list me sorry my english mm -hmm. yeah you're nice because i think it on well connects it okay if you capture different views then you start incubating ideas and then it's like back to this 
proposing his freedom and all that. I, I'm bringing up a video like this. Um, uh, does this? Yes, yes, this video. Yes, this video. Uh, Even uh, I, I saw the first time, and now I I begin to to see again, to to catch the message, to make some slides. To it's like to to try to copy what Charles writes in the time in the dashboard. Yeah, I. I was wondering too, and maybe we can work on this to, together. I was thinking maybe I should bring all of this information on my robot so that we can kind of navigate these topics and uh, messages is uh, like bringing up and then deleting. <laughs> well, you, you, you know, the, the intersect and the, 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 the Catalyst project and all this. I feel in the sense it's uh, everybody wants to this uh, technology go by the the good road, you know, the, for uh, the good path, you know, and uh, the people try to, to give the the, the the best that each one uh, have and share the the ideas or uh, listen to learn. Because the, the, even when we talk to each other, I learn something with you. Maybe you learn something with me. And uh, also this part of the education, you know. I have my map, my, my brain's map. You have your brain's map. And uh, and map, it's not the land, it's a representation of, of our visions, you know. And uh, for me, what, one of the things that I like in this uh, decentralized governance, it's the opportunity to give my, my view. Sometimes uh, I know that it's not uh, one hundred percent correct, but also I know it's not uh, under percent uh, incorrect, you know. And uh, it's uh, sharing. Uh, if the goal is to create a, a, a good sense of regulation. Uh, I like uh, the goal because it's not someone in the office in the 11 uh, plant decide uh, what kind of the regulation that the society needs to follow, you know. Mm. Because this person in the top of the building lost the, the common sense. And most of the times it's ideological or uh, another kind of interest. Mm. Well, that brings up his, um, and recently also Charles launched, uh, like went through a video about tenants, like 11 tenants. And I think that was uh, a nice kind of segue into like, okay, what is really the principal values that we are trying to find. And the fact that they are conflicting is even more like, yeah. <laughs> like a challenging because yeah, then, it, yeah. then it means that you have to find a balance between something yeah I feel so oh uh, uh, sorry but uh, right now Tivo sorry I, I liked the, the, the conversation in the next meeting we we explore uh, more uh, more teams but uh, right now I need to to go out to the to buy uh, I need to go to the supermarket it's close sure um, so, uh, but thanks uh, for joining and I will wrap this up and thank you. Thank you, and uh, have a, a nice day. And same to you. And find something nice for yourself in shop. <laughs> okay, thank you. I need to go. <laughs> um, yeah, so with this after down hall, um, these meeting summaries will be transferred into a more cohesive um, a summary and action items, insights we take. Not all the meeting notes were taken, so I will 
uh, recatch some of that in this video itself. All of that information will be in the GitHub and uh, where I will list out the meeting summary and that will be in the link. Uh, link to that will be in the description below. Thanks for being part of our discussions or catching up with them.